What's going on, players? In this video, we are going to talk about the 131 defense and specifically the top player. In this video, it's labeled point guard, but it can be whomever you think is best suited to play the top position in the 131. It doesn't have to be your point guard, it can be a longer player, it can be a quicker player. We'll have we'll talk about the rules or the guidelines. We'll talk about what's required of this guy, what skills and attributes he has, his role, so what things does he have to do in his job, and the rotations and his responsibilities that he makes based on ball movement. So let's get right into it. For now, I'm going to pull off of these players because we don't need them on the court. I just want to keep the top player on the court. And we'll show the top player. We'll talk about a little bit about him and his job. So if you've watched the overview video, the first rule that he's responsible for is no middle. So when the offense is bringing up the ball, often they'll bring it up the middle of the court. His job is to play on ball defense if the ball is in the middle. Pressuring it enough but not to the point where the ball can get past them and stay middle. He wants to stay between ball and hoop and be a big enough bug so that this dribbler feels uncomfortable staying here and picks a side, whether it's the left side or the right side of the court. He picks a side. Once he does that, now our point card can melt into a position that is called a passing lane or a deny defense and we talk about this in their overview there should there should always be four players playing pass lane or or, or pass defense and one player playing on ball defense so his first rule is no middle he wants to make sure the ball is not in the middle and that it picks a side his second rule is that he wants to be he wants to prevent any chance the ball can be passed quickly more than one time so we we never want swing swing to happen okay we always just want a slow pass to happen whether it's a law pass or it's a bounce pass to to um from offensive player to offensive player we don't want it to be where he's out of position and the pass can get zipped from here to here and then zipped from here to here or zipped from here to here and then zipped from here to here. He has to do a good enough job where his hands are in the air. Maybe he's jumping. Uh, he's playing monkey in the middle. And he's really making and taking away this passing lane. And making it hard for this player just to throw zip passes. So those are the two main rules that the guard is responsible for. No middle and no swing swing or quick passes. So what is required out of the guard? The guard, this player must be a good on-ball defender. Uh, he, he should be one more of your skilled players with good footwork. Uh, he should have lateral quickness where he can move side to side and not get beat with, you know, a fake or a misdirection dribble by the offensive player. He should be able to move and cover that ball and stay between ball and hoop. Uh, and he should have good hands. His hands should be in an active position where he can deflect a pass. Uh, he can he can he can make it so that he's mirroring the ball, and to prevent quick passes or zip passes, his hands may be high here. One hand may be high mirroring it. One hand may be in the passing lane over here. But his hands are active, and he has quick hands. Um, his role is <clears throat> isn't too big as far as you know the overall um requirements of him but again he's able to play good defense he can pressure the ball and force it to the sides um two the second thing is he's able to melt down into passing lanes so once he does a good job of on ball and, and the dribbler chooses a side he's able to melt down and, and have his head on a swivel and see if there's a player behind him and be between the passing lane of this player. If this player drops down, he reads that, he can see the passing lane, and he knows when to attack and when to melt 
into the passing lane. Okay, he can read the ball uh, and the dribbler uh, fairly well. Um, and he can keep the ball in the corners. Again, uh, this is where this, this player wants to defend that ball, pushing it into what we call a corner box, this box right here, keeping it over there, uh, and not allowing it to come into this middle lane. Uh, he's able to drop into free throw coverage. So if the ball goes down into corners, then he would be able to cover this whole circle zone around the free throw line. Not necessarily having to go too low, but it may be a requirement where he needs to come down to the dotted line of the circle. So I call this the free throw circle, okay, this whole zone right here. And his job is when ball goes low, corners, low posts, anywhere in middle, that he's got to come down into coverage and protect this area from passes as well. Um, he's able to read the next pass and make the correct steal. So by dropping into this zone, he's able to watch this ball handler's eyes. It doesn't matter who it is, but this player might want to pass it here. He might want to dribble it. He might want to bring it up, or he might want to swing it to a player that's in the middle here. Our top is able to read the eyes of the ball handler, and if necessary, if the pass comes, he's able to get in front and make that steal and take off with that ball. So skill at reading the eyes of the passer is something that this player needs to develop practice to practice. And then he's able to funnel. And part of this top player's job is that when he does allow players to pick a side, he positions himself in the passing lane defense. So his toes are pointed to the sideline, okay, or pointed to the player. His feet are not kind of, he's not back to basket player. He is back in the passing lane, but his toes are to the, to the ball. And his hands act as a funnel. His one defensive hand is going to be funneling to our center player who's right here. And I'll give you an example on the other side. We'll put a wing player on the other side. We'll have this player. And this is the triple team. They're both in pass lane coverage. But this is a funnel that we want to create the ball handler to believe that he can use uh, that's open for him to attack, whether it's this gap here or this gap here. He wants to show a funnel, and then as soon as that ball gets dribbled, he's able to trap the ball in this funnel, and he's able to dig, get in here and dig. Uh, and I'm detailed with my dig. I want him to dig, for example, this point guard, I want him to dig with his right hand and scoop away from the, the ball handler towards his center deflecting that ball towards its, his center. And then, uh, digging-wise, he gets a couple chances at that ball before he has to melt down into passing lane coverage. So he's able to funnel. He's able to, when the ball is driven middle, he's able to dig, especially if it's on his side, okay, and deflect the pass to his center, okay? If the ball is picked up here and the center steps up for on-ball defense, he's able to melt down and cover the, the passing lane behind the center and anything that may be passed in this area behind the center. And usually what I say is you want to melt down to the most dangerous next pass. So, for example, if the most dangerous next pass just happens so to be, I don't know, we'll pull, oh wait, why don't we put that guy here, put that guy back. And we'll put a shooting guard out, doesn't matter. Maybe the next most dangerous pass is right here. So he's going to melt down into this passing lane right here. Okay. Maybe the next most dangerous pass is he somehow got middle. He's going to melt down into this passing lane right here. Okay. So being able to melt down into coverage behind, beside the center uh, to take away those passes. What can't happen is when he funnels and digs, he can't stay here for too long because you're going to have three guys on ball and it opens up a lot for a good offensive team to get in positions where a pass can be made. So let's take him back up. We'll take these guys out. Let me just pop here. So we've got a point guard. We don't need him in. 
we'll take your mode here for now, and we'll put our center node here for now. We'll put this guy just on defense here for now, and we'll put this guy. I'm sorry, I had my point guard on top. We'll put this guy here. All right. So let's talk a little bit about um, the position of the rotations and the responsibility of the top player. So our rotations are responsibility of the top player, this top guy, based on where the ball position is. And we're going to go over eight different ball positions for all the players. And we'll just talk about the rotations as the ball moves. So the first position for the ball is, is top middle or top three. When the ball is in the top position, again, the first rule that is in play is no middle. So he now has on ball responsibility. He does not want to be on the side. He does not want to be on the side. He needs to be in between the ball and the basket and an arm's length away, arm and a half's length away, but his hands are active and he's pressuring the ball. Okay. When the ball goes to a wing, Let's say it goes to a wing three up on the right. He now will drop into or melt into wing to wing pass coverage. Again, so if there is a player over here, he's going to be in this passing lane. Now, when the ball handler is dribbling, he can be a little closer. But as soon as he picks up his dribble, if he's not in um, a threat as far as range, so a threat meaning if he were here and able to shoot the ball, and let's say our center isn't up, our point guard's got to be up and contesting that shot, uh, or at least in, in the space of the player. If this is a right-hand shooter, obviously he's not going to be able to contest it without fouling. But the real responsibility is that our center needs to make sure that he's up and on the ball for anyone who would be a threat to shoot a three-point wing shot. We'll get to the center in a bit. So here he's, a, if the ball is in the three-point position, he's in the melt position, okay? He's between this passing lane. He's melted it, and he's covering the passing lane. If the ball goes down to the corner, okay, his job is to, to cover the free throw line or the free throw circle. In this passing lane, again, where is the threat? Who is the threat? He's got to make sure that he's got coverage of the most dangerous threat that would be anywhere in the free throw line range or above or the dotted line range or above. If this is the threat, he doesn't want to come way down here. That's not his responsibility. His, this guy's responsibility would be the small forward or the wing on this side to come in front that pass. And he would still be taken away any coverage now if there were no players here he could just be in a position where he could again defend the next worst the next most threatening player okay who uh would be able to be a pass so it might be here that he needs to cover because that ball is, is going to go right here okay and his pass coverage he doesn't want to come all the way out here he, again the ball is dropped down so he has to cover the free throw line and any dangers in this area right here okay next when the ball if the ball comes to the low post let's just say it gets to the low post and we'll put a post player in there let's give me a post player it doesn't matter let's go with a center if the ball is in the low post again his job is to drop down into the dotted line or somewhere in the circle and cover the passing lane the post should be covered. Now, worst case scenario, if somehow the ball went baseline and our shooting guard got beat and our post got beat, our wing, where is my small forward's not out here. I think I lost him. We'll put the small forward back out here. Let's put the small forward on this side. And he's got the ball and he got beat. Well, the help is going to have to come from here. So our our weak side wing is going to have to come help and our point guard can again take away that danger or if there were a couple of dangers here he'd have to split the difference and kind of cover two players right here so maybe he's right in the middle so this would be an out of position position that the point guard may find himself in if 
we had a, a leak in our defense and a baseline drive that covered that that forced everybody out of coverage. Now, let's go back into we have coverage. Okay, so ball gets fronted, go, ball goes to post, but we have coverage. Okay, again, he just needs to cover the 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 free throw line, the zone. He can let players get behind him because our weak side should be able to cover whatever threats may he may may be happening. But our center will be doing a good enough job, being big, being in position to really deter this kind of pass from happening right here. Uh, and our shooting guard would be in position where there's going to be so much pressure on that ball that it would make it almost impossible to make this pass. And reality is our wing on this side is is would be on that ball too. So this would be a funnel position that would have happened to create the ball to be in the low post right here. Again, the pressure on that ball is going to be in, immense that our point guard should be able to just come down to the free throw line and cover this zone right here and any threats that might be in the zone uh, without any issues. If the ball were in the, at the free throw line, okay, or sorry, if the ball were at the high post, the ball were at the high post, it is now his responsibility and the center's responsibility to cover the ball at the high post. Again, um, taking away the funnel, it's, it's a similar scenario where it'd be a wing, that be here, the center would be in position and playing on ball defense. The wing would be here uh, digging at the ball uh, and trying to deflect it. And then uh, after one or two digs, melting down to cov to passing lane coverage that, um, let's say the center had that ball, he'd be taking away the passing lane coverage in the free throw area. If the ball were in the top, and they were driving from the top. Let's talk about that for a second. So let's take out some of these defense. We'll put a guard with the ball at the top. Okay. Any type of attack from the middle, where the ball is attacking the middle, the, the top player must play great on ball defense and take away, um, the driving lanes and that's why you want this player to be good with their feet and be able to move laterally so that they can properly uh, defend on ball and really pressure the ball handler uh, to not be able to drive middle the second level is that our center lines up along between the ball and the hoop as well so even if the point guard did drive and was able to get past the 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 top player our center would be the next level of defense here and so would our wing our wing would be in a position inside and so would our other wing would be in a position inside to deter any passes that may be coming this way again the on ball defense would become from the center so he would have to step up and again, would want to have some skills where he could defend laterally. And the point guard wouldn't quit here. The point guard would stay with the ball and stay on pressure. Almost, again, like a funnel where we're funneling until he picks up the ball. And then we're melting back and we have on-ball coverage there. So that's a, that's a drive from the top. What if we had a drive from the wing? So maybe there's a drive from the wing. What does the point guard, what does our top have to do? Not the point guard, but what does our top have to do? What's his responsibility? On a wing drive, his responsibility is to trap, dig, and melt. Okay, so on a wing drive, where the point guard is driving wing, the center is on ball, our, our top is, is, is going to come in and start to, if, especially if ball is on his side, start to dig. But if ball is away, our point guard is going to come in and trap. This would be the, the the ball handler's left shoulder. So he's going to trap the left shoulder. Our center's on ball. And our other wing would come and trap and dig at the ball because it's on his side, uh, the right shoulder. And that would be our trap right there. Again, we're trying to dig and deflect to the center. And then on those drives, they would melt. If 
let's say the point guard was able to beat the center, our top has to recognize that and come down, and our wings have to come down. And again, in position over here would actually be our baseline, our two. So our two would be the lower level would step up and again, make it hard position-wise because this would be their placement for this particular drive. So, and then again, it leaves for a pass to wherever it would go and we would close out to melting positions. And obviously everyone will close out. We'll talk about that later as a team when we talk about the one three one as a team. And last but not least is the corner drive. So if there were a drive from the corner, what does our top do? Our top, so let's just put these guys in position. Our top would come down and defend the free throw line circle, okay? Taking away the passes and um, seeing the balls, and, but also looking to see who's the threat behind them and what player would they be able to make that next pass to. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video.